Hello, this is Larry Robertson. Hopefully you've watched the demonstration for both Windows and Mac versions of, of the application that's just on the machine based on an unwanted uh, Ethernet connection to a network. Okay, I'm going to show you in this video how to set up a script to actually shut the machine down based upon a specific uh, portion of an IP address. So to get started, I'm going to run Windows Explorer and the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, the hidden files are visible. So to do that, I think it's under, yeah, Tools, Folder, Options. And if you click on the View tab, you want to make sure that this Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives is clicked as opposed to that, okay? And then you want to apply it. All right, now that we can view the hidden files, we want to go to a folder that we can place the script in that will have permission by the operating system to execute. So I'm going to open up the C drive. I'm going to scroll down to Program Data. So if you click on Program Data, and within there, go into Microsoft, and within there, go into Windows. And I've created a directory under here called test. And in there I have the script that's going to do all the work. And it's a, a VB script. So I'm going to open that up and show you what's inside of it. Um, the way the script is right now, it allows you two different IP addresses. Uh, and only the first two portions of that IP address will be listed here. And these will be the unwanted um, network IPs that if an Ethernet cable is plugged in to your NIC card and the IP address begins with 10.20, then that's a no-no. This script will shut down the machine. All right. Currently, I've set both number one and number two to the same IP address, but this is just to demonstrate in this select case statement here. Um, it's going to check to see if it starts with number one or starts with number two. Now, you can add more to this if you have a whole list of servers that you don't want to be allowed to connect to your computer. But basically, uh, it uses WMI. Um, and it gets the IP address, and then based on that IP address, it will call the Win32 shutdown method. So I'm not going to go through this in, in fine detail. Um, it works as it is. Basically, all you have to change is this, these numbers. So that's all I'm going to say in this video about that. So closing that down. So now we know where it's at. It's under Program Data Microsoft Windows Test. The name of it's Driver1.vbs. I gave it a weird name uh, that's totally unrelated in case somebody's trying to come in safe mode or something on your machine to delete the script. So name it as you please. Try not to make it too obvious, otherwise somebody might be able to override this. All right. That having been said, the next thing we want to do, I'm going to minimize that, is we want to go into the control panel. We want to click on administrative tools and then the task scheduler. We're going to open up the task scheduler. Okay. When Inside the task scheduler, you want to expand the library 
and again I'm going to go into Microsoft Windows here and once I've selected that I'm going to make another um, new folder so over on the right side here um, I'm clicking on make a new folder and I'm going to name it test as well okay so when that creates it it'll appear all the way at the bottom down here so once that's open we want to come back over to the right side here and we want to click on create task don't click create basic task click on create task okay we're going to give the task the name which I'm going to call why not test okay um, I don't put a description in because I don't want anybody to know what it does now on the general tab here you want to change run when user is logged in to become run whether user is logged in or not and run with the highest privileges okay um, I'm going to skip the triggers we're going to come back to that and I go to the actions and click on the new button for action this allows you to browse for that script so click the browse button and I'm going to go into our test directory. This is Program Data Microsoft Windows Test. And I'm going to click on the script and click Open. Now we have to modify this. So add to the front end of this wscript.exe and then a space. Okay. And this, the action should be starting a program, and the program is your script. So once that's done, then click OK. By the way, the wscript.exe, you have to call that first to create the shell that the program will run in. Because if nobody's logged in, uh, it won't be able to run a VBS script unless you specifically open up the shell for it to run in. OK, so just click OK. And it's going to try to split these arguments apart. And you just say yes. Okay. So that's that. Now we're going to go back to the triggers. What things can trigger this script to be executed? So we want to create a new trigger. So click the new button. All right. We don't want to use on schedule. We want to trigger it at login for any user. That's cool. So press OK on that, and you can see we've got one trigger defined. Now we want to create another new one and do it at startup. Just leave everything defaulted. Um, your defaults may be different because I've turned some of these things off that were normally on, so pay close attention to the screens. Okay, then the next trigger, we want to say um, on connection to user session. Okay, any user, um, connection from remote computer is the first one. So click on that. Now we're going to do the same thing. Connect to user session, only we're going to choose for this one connection from local. And continuing on, then we want to say if the user disconnects. Again, remote. Another new one for the local. And the next action when the workstation is locked for any user and the last one is going to be when it's unlocked okay that's all of our triggers so we've covered general we've covered triggers 
with other actions. Now for the conditions. Um, make sure the first box is checked off. If you got a laptop you're doing this on, you might want to change this setting so that uh, regardless of whether it's battery or not. And you might want to click wake on this computer task, but I'm working on with a desktop here, so I'm not worried about those. You can experiment with those yourself if you need them. Um, and then on the last one, settings, you want to have allow tasks to be run on demand, off, off. Stop the task if it runs longer than three days. We're going to turn that off so that it doesn't matter if your computer's on for 50 years, the task will still be running. You don't want any method of somebody defeating this by that being set to three days. Um, if the task is running, do not end when re... No. If the running task does not end when requested, force it to stop. You want that turned on. And that one should be off. Do not start a new instance. Make sure that it's set to that because you don't want to have a new instance created by each trigger. Then you eat up all your memory. So that covers all the settings for this. And when you click OK, it's going to ask you for your password. And you have to have admin rights to do this, by the way. OK, and then you're done. Now you're all set. Um, the next time you reboot, um, this will take effect. Or you can uh, right mouse click under status and choose run and it will start right now. So that's it for this video. Uh, the script itself you can download from GitHub. My GitHub account, I'll put a link in the description of the video on YouTube. Alright, thanks for watching.